day is very light, super light conditions at the moment, so I guess let's talk about that. Um, in the super light days takes actually a lot of finesse, a lot of finesse in your setup and sailing. But uh, I guess first of all, you know, you set up your rig. Every time I give a talk, it's always big emphasis on, you know, fairly tight stays and plenty of sighting down your mast down here to make sure you get the boat, the mast centered in the boat. The shroud base on the boats nowadays are quite narrow, so it's very easy to get it off. And you usually look one side, drop it over the other, look down the other side. Okay, it's slightly off. Little adjustment on your side stays until until you're happy with it looking down, down both sides. There's other things I could talk about regarding spreader angle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, basic rig geometry, I suppose, is always real important. So you've got your stays nice and tight and everything's centered. Um, and then you want to, uh, to get your mast set up with a fairly straight, maybe a slight bend. But you also want something which gives you a bit of force tension, right? And a bit of rigidity in the whole framework. So that's where you, your mast gate here and your spreader angle. Uh, come into play. So, if I was to crank, I just bend my spreaders manually, you know. But if I was to crank my spreaders back, it pumps the mast forward. In the middle. If I was to invert them, it'd bring my mast back. But you know, for a reverse bend. So I did bring it back. You'd probably get a, a bend locally, and it's it's no good, you know. So you've got to kind of get everything. So it, if in the end you end up with a uniform kind of bend. So you get, it's all important to get your spreaders about right, your mass ram about right. In fact, the mass ram is really important for your whole rig foundation. Now, it's got to be coming out of the boat pretty nice and set you up for a, um, a nice, fairly rigid setup. Yeah, I mean that's all really important. A good, a good side, good setup side to side. So you don't want your rig off to one side. And the reason for that, particularly, I think, is. On one tack, your main leech will be tight and you'll be rounding up. The other tack, your main leech will be loose and you'll, and you'll be a bit soft on the other tack. So uh, that's the main reason you want your rig centered is, is to so your main leech is the same and the boat's balanced and tracking on both tacks. Um, so we're looking at a really light day. So as I say, it's a lot of finesse out there, you know, really slow movements on the helm. It's really important that everything swivels and eases out and the sails flop and wing out and do all those little things you want them to in this light stuff. If you've got a jib which is jammed and won't ease out or, or your main's not going out um, or you're not goose winging, um, that, that stuff which is really, will really hurt you on a light day like today. And even that goose winging thing. Um, some of the Europeans will be expert at this, but maybe no, not so much. But sometimes you, a lot of it's to do with um, your counterweight and how far out it is, and when you get it balanced, and you know, and it just it naturally flops out there quite nicely. If you're sailing, say, upwind, and you and the wind goes really light, and your rig, your jib suddenly backwinds, it's out too far for sure. But that's really just a bit of playing, playing around to get that. Um, Counterweight in the right spot. You really just got to wait for some super light days and just go and sail and maybe change it a bit. And when you get close, um, things start to happen a bit easier. Of course, your sheets need to be able to run easily. So yeah, everything, everything swinging. And um, another thing which can can stop your main boom from swinging is if you got everything tight. Say with your Cunningham here. Now your Cunningham should never be tight in these conditions. Light stuff like this, you really want, you know, you want a bit of depth in your sails just so they get a little bit of shape. In fact, if it's super light, it's probably not quite so critical because you want the sail to pop easy side to side. But um, you want your luffs of both sails so there will be minimum tension, just nice and full and soft. If the front of your jib's soft, you know, you'll see it. You'll see it back a little bit easier. This actually just gives a nicer shape anyway. But um, 
it'll just backwind a little bit more obviously and you can steer the boat a little bit more easily. The other thing which I use a lot in light conditions is these jib woolies, um, which I have big fat dark ones because um, I use them a lot. It's pretty handy, you know, I can be sailing along in light stuff. The guy next to me hasn't got woolies on. I see that the outside one's suddenly going up, you know. I use my sheets and then wind it up and all of a sudden I'm gone, you know, and he's going, how did you do that? <laughs> and uh, it was just from sometimes from those little telltales. How far should those telltales be back from the forestay? Um, I don't know, I think about that far. Seriously. But I know if you go too far forward, I think sometimes they, yeah, they don't give you very good information. Um, you need to have them back a bit, what is that, about 40 or 50 millimetres? I have two sets, just in case one set gets stuck. Or sometimes it's hard to see your boat, you might have better visibility of the top ones, for example. So what about the foot, Ian, of both the jib and the main? I mean, I'd, I don't tend to adjust my, my mainsail foot very much. Um, I go through the whole range of conditions pretty much with, you know, probably similar to what you see there, which is what, maybe 15, 20 mil or something like that. Um, you know, if you come from big boats, you, you tend to okay the wind's up you pull your air holes on and your cunningham's tight and, and you do a lot, lot with your mast bend and things but i my philosophy is set your sail up to look natural particularly talking about main here i don't change hardly anything with my main through the whole range really the main thing i do is tension the luff um, and one reason for that is uh, sometimes when you get to the top end of the a-rig the boat can get a little bit light and you know the bow gets blown off well mm. if you've got a bit of grunt in the back of your sail it kind of locks you in you know it locks the boat in on track a bit better through the range i think if you go flat on your main and your boat's lack you know hasn't got quite enough bite you can start getting blown off course and it's just a bit of grunt in this part of the sail i think helps you just keep tracking and balance nicely but the jib foot i can change quite a bit you know it's flat water so I just go with a nice little moderate, moderate kind of shape there, nothing too extreme. Um, if the wind came up just a little bit and it was a bit of a chop, I'd definitely go deeper on the jib foot. And then if we were sailing jib top end, I'd flatten it out. As I say, you can top end, sometimes you're getting bow blown off course, flatten the jib. And, uh, and, that, and having your jib flat, um, when the wind's up, prevents your main from backwinding as much as well. But that's probably one of the biggest things I change as the wind comes up, is to tension the luff of the sail and, and the jack. tension the jack stay. What's optimised? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, you think you think you know what you're doing, and then someone comes along and you're sailing diff set up differently and going past you. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, and the way you sheet the sails is the other important thing for light airs sailing. Um, and those familiar with, with big boats will know what I'm saying here. I mean, in a big boat, say you're sailing along and your Nolix 25, you're getting a little bit of wind, and uh, and you pull your traveller up or your main sheet on, and you feel the power, and the boat trips up, you know. Um, and that's all good for light airs. You're always chasing power and heel for the light um, but at the same time when it is light you know your crew's not up on the rail or whatever you don't want to be choked on the jib so for the light ears and as a general rule of thumb I don't want to be soft on the leech I, I bring my main in for a start here um, probably three mil in three millimeters from my usual setting and I ease my jib out a bit so I've got lots of power in the leech of the main trip me up and get the healing over and going but I'm a bit I'm five mil eased on here at the moment too so I got a bit more openness in the jib and just let the wind come through the slot light ears main leech in a bit jib out a bit as soon as you as soon as you're healing up you know getting anywhere close to your maximum heal 
you're probably straight back to your regular settings. As soon as you're healed, your, your settings on the sheets will pretty much stay the same once you're powered up. And all, all that is, is, you know, all those of you with my setup guides will know, I, I go for about 8 mil here and maybe 60 here. Um, that's kind of what seems to suit the V10 nicely and is a nice, gives a nice relationship between the two sails. Okay, so that's what, so you're setting up for the light, you know, you've got a bit of wind. These are my maximum in positions. So that's when I got a bit of breeze, okay? That's when I've gone along and, and the boat's just starting to heal up and get moving. Then you sheet it, sheet it right into there and just let it power and heal and sail along. The wind goes light, then that's probably a bit too choked, you know, if the boat suddenly stands right upright. I got this little switch, magic switch on my radio, and I'll click that up when it gives me five millimeters of he um, ease. Because the boat sits there pretty upright, not with a lot in it. I, you know, you want to just ease the sails a bit, get a bit of flow. Um, and then if it goes even lighter again, like if I was out there now, there's pretty much nothing. I would be even eased out from that on my stick. Maybe a couple of clicks. And if it was really light, I don't know. What have I got there? 40, 40 mil in the main. You're just sitting there. Just let it breathe. Yeah, so one thing you might look for um, when you're setting up, particularly on a day like today, is you, you sheet on, you go, okay, that looks good for upwind. I've been talking about, you know, fairly tight main leech and that. That looks all pretty good. But then what sometimes can happen is you used to go downhill and your main leech is tight. If it's really light conditions and your main's just boned down like that, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty damn slow. So, you know, you can look up there and think, okay, my main leech is looking similar to what it did upwind. Um, so it's not too bad, but you don't want it locking down now. You're saying, well, how do I, how do you control that? Yeah. And um, that is all in the geometry, basically of the pivot, the pivot line of your whole Vang system, and the way it points to the top of your top of your um, your sail. Okay. Um, so if let, let's say for this sail, I'd cut it with a whole pack of luff round in it, and so I needed a lot of mast bend. I needed a lot of mast bend to make the sail look natural, right? To hold, fall off the of mast natural like I'm talking about. Well, in that case, the top of my mast would be back, and this pivot point here <coughs> would be coming through, say, in a line, say, here. It all takes a bit of thinking about, I know, but um, because suddenly you've gone back here, let's say you went back there, suddenly your leech is loose, so you're winding your vang on, but then when you go downwind, that's when it tightens up. Takes a bit of thinking about. But that's one reason why, you know, one meter mass is generally set up quite straight because you have that super light condition. Um, if you set up with a lot of mass bend and things aren't um, lining up and your leech is tightening when you ease it out, um, your boat suddenly won't go through the whole wind range. And so to correct that, I've shifted my mast, um, put my mast ram on to bring the bottom of the mast back and look and um, so it's more in line with the very top pivot point of the sail. Yeah. Then ease it out. This method is quite common overseas, like Europeans use that method a lot. Some of them actually go downwind, get their vang what they want, and then then sheet it on, not a bad method, and then use their mast ram to get it look, looking right upwind. Mm. Of course, once you start going downwind, I mean, you can, you can have some adjustment on how far your jib goes out, just by how far your sheets ease. So you can see, I've, I mean, my maximum ease position, my main there, has got a bit of main. She's got a bit of slack in it, which means the jib's going quite a way out, which is quite a nice setting if um, you know you, you've got a bit of a, a broad reach going on. Just let your jib rotate a bit further, catch a bit more breeze. Um, but generally downwind, I think you know you want. Especially if there's wind, you want your main sheet just sort of going tight when it hits the shrouds approximately. And yeah, so you know, any helm movements on a day like today, nice and slow. You've got no waves out there, so you can use momentum. 
you know, once you're up and going, you've got a bit of momentum. Don't kill it with a big wiggle on the Hard rudder. Corners. Yeah. Um, you know, slam it through a tack and park it. <laughs> In these conditions, you got you got low resistance from waves and you got low resistance from wind as you go through the tack. Um, so use your momentum, you know, just do a nice rotation depending on your wind and waves and practice that. It's very tempting just to whack it through a tack and get going on the other side. But uh, I'm not locked in the corner, I can still sail the boat with a bit of breeze. In this configuration, if the wind came up, I would have to be wary that I might be getting a bit of weather how and I'll be maybe working it a little bit. But then you kind of recognise that the wind's up. <coughs> you just drop your main out, maybe bring your jib in, whatever you think. But. So it's, yeah, as I say, it's finesse. It's recognising what, what the wind actually is. If it's, is it really light? Or, you know, how much is the boat healing? How much breeze is there? Okay, it's really upright, so I've got to ease down a bit, you know? And just caressing, just trying to find that right line. Okay, a little puff, boat heels over. Let it, let it build, start to bring it in, and then you clock it right in. If it heels up, then yeah, keep it in and just let it sail. Well, when the wind comes up, it's very tempting just to keep your sails boned in, right? <laughs> um, worked remarkably well I think but um, once you get fully powered um, you start to get overpowered well your sails start luffing there's lots of you know windage in your rig the drag on your rig, rig starts to increase um, you got your sails pulled in very square to the boat so all this pressure is pulling your boat sideways um, and at some point that really gets a bit mush. You need to start easing your sails and let it spring yeah, you forward. You yeah, know? It's about 30 degrees. Yeah. Uh -oh. And after that, any more pressure, you're actually going, as Ian says, sideways and effectively creating more friction in the boat and yeah. the rig. So you get to 30 degrees, you really want to start easing so the boat doesn't heal anymore. Yeah. And at that point you think, oh, shit, I'm easing the sails. I'm not going to point so well. Well, wrong. Mm. Mm. Practice it and get used to it because, um, as I say, the boat, your boat doesn't necessarily get weather helm when the wind's up. In fact, it can blow away. Let's say you get very top end of a rig, your bow is actually blowing away, and your boat's getting pressed on the water. And the more you sail, the more you can see it. You're kind of getting pressed. Okay, so then ease your sails, let it spring. If you want to get weather helm into a boat, what do you do? You go on a two sail reach, right? Then so the helm starts really loading up. It's because your sails ease and the effort of the sails sort of move back and it generates a bit of helm. So you ease your sails. Yeah, boat comes upright a bit so you're not just pressed and getting pushed sideways. You spring forward. Okay, so your boat's a bit upright. You're move, always moving well. The wind's shifting or there's waves. The boat keeps moving well. Um, and also if you've got a bit of ease, if you, if you suddenly get headed, you've got a bit to pull in, you know. You get headed, crank in. And, the boat going. And Ian, thank you so much. Yeah. Paddy, just for a second there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And how you've you've connected so many different things, aspects of our sport. Um, and it, it's it's I think for me, the joy in the sport is the fact that it's not just the sailing; it's everything else as well. And thanks for those. Generally, yeah. Spend some time with your rig. Yeah. Get your foundation yeah. right. Thank you, Ian. Awesome. Thanks.